Okay, now, now the next, next section, uh, verses 8 through 11. So right after he says, One who has died has been set free from sin. Then he continues saying, Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. It was a done deal. Once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Whew. It also, uh, in New King James Version, says, Reckon, you must reckon yourselves dead to sin alive to God in Christ Jesus. We died with Christ and we live again with Christ. We died with Him and rose with Him. That's the born again experience. Jesus being raised from the dead <clears throat> will never die again. Death has no dominion over Him. He already accomplished this victory over death and sin for us. In Him, we are as dead to sin and death as we will ever be. It is just a matter of believing it. He will not die again. And we will not die again in this prophetic sense. Uh, we will at the end of our life in transition. Um, but He will not die again and we will not die again. Again, in, in, in this prophetic sense of this it, it was a once and for all finality. Death no longer has dominion over him. When Jesus died, he died to sin once for all. And the life he lives, he lives to God. This is our inheritance and our new nature. We died to sin with him. And now with him, we live life unto God. We're commissioned, we are, we are commanded to see ourselves, to do the math, to reckon ourselves, see ourselves, and consider ourselves as dead to sin as Christ is. As an absolute finality, done deal, we are to see ourselves as dead, as dead to sin and alive to, unto God, that we died with Him and rose with Him, and that we are to live and see life like that, that we are to see that He made us a new creation, that He truly washed our sins, that He is the Lamb of God that takes away our sins. And we are to see ourselves that way and reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. We live our lives unto God, not unto sin. We are dead towards sin, alive to God. We once were, were dead, lived dead towards God, and alive to sin. And our born again experience flipped that completely. It's called a conversion. It's called being born again. Now it's flipped. Now we are dead towards sin and alive unto God. We are to live and see life like that. We are not supposed to see ourselves as evil and sinful and wicked and wear an identity. We're supposed to put off the old. We're supposed to take off those clothes and put on the new clothes. We're supposed to reckon ourselves dead to sin. It couldn't be any more clear. We died to sin with Him, and now with Him we live life unto God. Unto God. Paul, Paul therefore then says that because of this, we must also consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. We died with Him and rose with Him. And he said that Jesus, what he did was once for all, and he, he died to sin. He became the perfect sacrifice, and he became sin on the cross, and, it, and sin was cursed by God. Jesus died to sin. Sin, it was over. He defeated sin, and now he lives unto God in the resurrection glory. And he says, in the same way of thinking, 
you have to see yourself in this light, in this truth, that you, mu you must see yourself as dead to sin and alive unto God in Christ Jesus. As I said, the New King James words it so perfectly. I, I love the way it words it. It says, reckon yourselves to be dead. To, indeed, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Indeed, dead to sin. Reckon yourself indeed dead to sin. To sin. We are told by Paul to consider ourselves and reckon ourselves completely dead to sin. It was once and for all, completely done, forever finished. We are to have a once and for all mindset now of being once and for all completely dead to sin. Paul over and over, over and over again tells us that we are free from sin, dead to sin, and that our old self was crucified with him. Then he tells us to reckon ourselves as indeed dead to sin. Why? Why does, why does he say this? Because we already are. Because we already are dead to sin. We are free from sin and dead to it and are able to go and sin no more like Jesus said. And therefore, this is the reality and the truth of the gospel and of our born-again nature. And therefore, we must align our mindset and thinking, our thinking with this truth and reckon ourselves, see ourselves as once and for all, therefore, dead to sin. So many people keep a sin conscience and a confession of still being a sinner and not free from sin's control and power. But this is not a biblical thing to do at all. Paul tells us to reckon ourselves dead to sin. You can't reckon yourself dead to sin and still hold to a mindset that believes you are still sinful and not free. It is actually disobeying the Bible to hold on to a sin conscience and sin identity. The Bible says the opposite. It says to see yourself as dead to sin. It doesn't say to see yourself as bound, a slave, or a sinner. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Remember about the importance of any placement of a therefore. So, so here Paul, Paul says this. Therefore, so because you are truly dead to sin and free from all of its power, and you must, because you must reckon yourself and identify yourself as dead to sin, and all, and all that Paul just said, because of this, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Paul tells us to never let sin reign in our mortal body. That means it doesn't have to. And sin does not have the jurisdiction to rule in our bodies. We don't have to obey sin's passions. For we, for we're, we are not made to. We're not made to. We were never designed to. Also, he said, mortal body, another clear indicator that he is talking about walking in freedom and victory right now in this life on earth. Because we won't have a mortal body in heaven. L let's continue on and break down this next section. Um, the next verse, verse 13 and 14. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. We are told by Holy Spirit through Paul to never 
never present our bodies and our lives to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but to present ourselves to God as being truly brought from death to life and our members as instruments of righteousness. We've already been brought from death to life. Another indicator. This is another indicator that he is saying we already died and rose with him. He's not talking future tense. He's talking about our salvation experience. We are to present ourselves to God as those who have already been brought from death to life. As those who have already died with Christ and rose with him. Who died to sin and live unto God for righteousness. Temples of the Holy Spirit. We are actually instruments of righteousness now. He said, present your members to God as instruments for righteousness. We are actually instruments of righteousness, righteousness now. That is our new identity. We aren't sinful messes. We are instruments of righteousness. You are not supposed to see your body as some defiled and unholy thing that cannot be holy. The Bible says the opposite. Our bodies are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are now supposed to be presented to God as instruments of righteousness. And then right here is a conjunction word for. For is a bridge saying to present your members as righteous instruments to God because sin has no dominion over you. Because he said, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. Right before that he said, present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For, this is, this is why and this is how it's possible. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. This is proof that grace is the empowerment to live in freedom, the empowerment to live righteous. That's the power of grace. Sin will have no dominion over you because of grace. And you can present your members to God as instruments of righteousness because of grace. Sin will have no dominion over you. You can do that. You can present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Because sin will have no dominion over you. It has no dominion because you're under, under grace, not under law. When you're under law, sin does have dominion. And that's what Paul gets into in Romans 7, which we'll obviously get into later, later on. But let's uh, wrap this up here. Just finish the rest of this here. Um, because so sin will have no dominion over you. And sin has no dominion because you are not under law, but under grace. Wow. You're not under law, but under grace. So sin has no dominion. Wow. Wow. We can reckon ourselves dead to sin and present ourselves to God as brought, as those brought from death to life as righteous instruments. As righteous instruments, like, like the sanctified instruments of the temple. Wow. We can because sin no longer has dominion over us because of His grace. Because of His grace that we are now under instead of being under the law. His grace frees us and does what the law could not do. Sin has no dominion or power over us. You hear me? Sin has no dominion or power over us. Sin lost its dominion because of grace, because of what Jesus did. This is what grace really looks like. It is empowerment to live free. Grace is being not condemned. Grace is releasing forgiveness. Grace is not condemning you, but then empowered, empowering you to pour oh my, to go, the Greek word for go, that I talked about in a previous episode. And that's that's grace. It's not being condemned, but the, but being empowered. Instead of being condemned, it's withholding condemnation, giving grace and mercy, and then empowering you 
to, to go to Portiomai and to launch into a life of sinning no more, a life of a go and sin no more life, a life of true freedom. Something I also want to mention about are, are the words in this passage about being raised with Christ. These statements are very precisely declared by Paul as being our born-again salvation experience and, and are not about the resurrection at the last days. There are many key words that show that this is 100% about our born-again experience and the life we live now on earth and not when we die and go to heaven. just wanted to mention that again a little bit. Um, the first phrase that indicates this. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Paul said we, referring to himself and those of us who are alive on earth still, not those who died and went to heaven. Second phrase. So let me back up for a second, make sure you understood me. The first phrase, how can we who died to sin, past tense, still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? This is a past tense statement. And Paul said, we, referring to himself and those of us who are alive on earth, Still, we're still on earth, not those who died and went to heaven. The second phrase, our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Our old self was already crucified with him. It's our old self. That means that, it's, that it isn't who we are anymore. And it's already done and is a sealed deal. And we are in fact our new selves, our new selves right now already in this life on earth. And again, he also said body of sin. Um, that's present. That's, yeah, the mortal body, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the other, the other verse. Uh, in the third phrase, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. If Paul was talking about in heaven after we die, he would not command us to call ourselves dead to sin. Being dead to sin is our nature and reality now. A, a, quote, a quote on this subject that I enjoy very much is this. Uh, it's, it's a quote by Georgian Banoff. Um, he says, if we, are not, if we are not set free from sin until we die, then Jesus isn't our Savior. Death is. And I, I think I'm just going to end with that right there, uh, and then we'll continue on after that. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to read one last section um, just to finish off um, the final part of the, uh, the next verses of Romans 6. Um, six uh, Romans 6, 14 will pick up. Uh, sin... Sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Question mark. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, 
the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you see how many, there were so many more indicators in there of, the, of it being a present truth and present reality. Amazing. More, that's just more and more glorious and precious words about our liberty. And Paul, Paul still unfolds even more and more of our true identities in Christ. And two more times, he yet again said that we are free from sin. And he shows in his words even more times that he is referring to life now and not after we die. And I'm going to wrap up this episode with that right there. And uh, next, the next episode, we will walk through um, these sections of this passage that I just read and, and uh, break it down uh, and dig into it deeper. But um, thank you so much. Uh, this episode went a little bit longer, uh, but um, it's just oh, great stuff. I love this passage so much. So uh, thank you so much for listening to the Truth Produces Freedom podcast. And I pray that these scriptures, these tr- this truth in the Word of God will set you free, set your mind free, change the way you think and see yourself and uh, that you would reckon yourself dead to sin and alive unto God. Unto God. And join me next time to continue uh, in this journey. We're going to dig through all of it. It is good stuff, beautiful stuff. And we're going to unravel the twisting that people have done of, of these scriptures. Um, because it's beautiful, it's crystal clear. And I just pray a blessing over you, Lord Jesus. I lift up everyone listening. And I pray you would empower them, that you would show them their new identities, their new self they're supposed to put on, that they would put off the old, they would recognize that their old self was crucified with you, and they would put on the new self, Jesus, they would walk in newness of life, that they would reckon themselves indeed dead to sin and alive unto God. So I bless them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. So thank you again for listening to uh, the podcast, and uh, please join me next time. Love you guys. Thanks again for joining this week's episode of the Truth Produces Freedom podcast. You can find me on Facebook at Jonah Smith Preachings and Teachings. You can comment, uh, send me a message if you, if you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to uh, um, talk about on the show. Um, and uh, I'm also on a WordPress blog uh, and I'm on YouTube as well. And those are going to be under uh, Truth Produces Freedom podcast. And you can get this podcast anywhere that you find podcasts. Uh, please like, subscribe and share with people just so more people um, can get the podcast and hear um, the truth that's going to make them free. I just want to see people set free and walking in their identities. identities. So thank you so much for uh, joining and uh, may God bless you in Jesus' name.